Satan wants to do, wants to draw us away from God. And all of a sudden the voice gets quieter. He says, you can bring all the sacrifice you want to church, but it's not, it doesn't even compare to coming with your ears on because God has something for us. Are you ready to hear tonight? Are you? In the first Peter chapter three and first, verse 15 says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Set God apart. Set God apart from all other gods that God alone is sitting on the throne in your heart. He says, sanctify, set him apart, drive all the other gods out. And you have God alone for your God. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. He says, be ready. He says, you sanctify God and then you get yourself ready to explain why God is the God. And let me tell you, there is only one God. There is not a whole bunch of gods and the world is wondering what we knock on their doors what sets your God apart I tell you if you set him apart in your heart you'll be able to tell the world this is what my God did for me and this is why he's the real God and this is why he's the only God let's be able to give the world an answer they're wondering if Christianity is just another religion it's not sanctify the Lord God in your heart say, you know why God is real? Look what he did. He answered my prayer. Look what he did. He set me free from alcohol. Look what he did. He restored my family. Look what he did. He gave me a good church. Look what he did. He puts food on my table every day. Look what he did. Sanctify the Lord God your heart. Set him apart. Don't have another source. We try to explain faith away these days and we always want to go to man. I have a need and we run to everybody. Sanctify the Lord in your heart and let him be your supplier. Let him be your God. Let him be your everything. He deserves it. Let me tell you tonight, God has never asked you to be anything but God for you. That's all he's ever wanted is just to be God. He just wants to be God in our life. He says, sanctify and be prepared to give an answer. Wouldn't it be a sad surprise if you found out at the rapture that you're saved? got snatched right out of your job. What in the world? Because you're walking so far from God that you forgot what he's done for you. Wouldn't it be a so terrible surprise if you would find out the rapture that you're supposed to be on a mission field? Wouldn't it be a terrible surprise? Wouldn't it be a terrible surprise if you find out what God wants from your life when you see him, wouldn't it be a terrible surprise if Jesus was a stranger when you stand before him? You never took the time to get to know him. Wouldn't that be a terrible surprise? I tell you, let's get ourselves ready. Let's sanctify the Lord God. Ready to serve. Joshua had made a commitment. He says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites uh, in, whom, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He says, in my house... We have made a commitment. We know who we serve. 
He says, in my house, there is not a confusion about who we bow to, who we serve. But he says, not only are we going to sit by and watch God do his thing. He says, in my house, we're going to serve him. We're not just going to tag along. We're not going to be just a bunch of freeloaders in the Christian life. We're going to serve our God. If God saves you from hell. Is he not worth giving your life to? God saves you from an eternal fire. And he says, won't you be my servant? Won't you be my servant? Won't you be my servant? It's very little that he asks. Let me tell you tonight, free your schedule so when the church calls, you are ready. You get yourself, you get yourself some time. We get our lives so busy. The Bible says redeeming the time and the world has thrown at us a system to redeem the time. But let me tell you, we're busier than ever. It is not working. They say we get faster cars, we get cell phones, we get internet. We can reach the world from in the palm of our hand, but we cannot even have time to give our neighbor the gospel. The world's plan is not working, and it's getting us so busy. And all of a sudden the church calls, can you help? Oh, I got plans. I got plans. I'm not ready. Oh, church, I'm willing. I am will. Oh, I, I would love to be there. I would love to help you out, but I got all these engagements. I am not, I got, I was willing all along, but I never got myself ready. Let me tell you tonight, get yourself re- ready to serve God. Say, well, I don't want to have that free time. Have some free time. Don't get wrapped up. Don't be at every game that the world puts on. Don't be at every event that the world puts on. It doesn't matter how exciting it is. In that little box that people stick their face in for eight hours a day, the devil couldn't get into your house and he climbed in a box and now he's welcome. And don't blame the box. But we stick our face into that little box, into the world, and we sit there and sit there. When I got saved, I booted my television out, and it's never gotten back into my home yet. And I tell you, people say, well, you need it for this. I say, do I need it to, to reach God? And then I don't want it. Duh. Why do we have all that time to stick our face in there? And when the church calls, we say, I have made other arrangements. Let's get ourselves ready to serve God. What are we going to be doing when Jesus comes? Watch days of our lives. I think that's something that's on television, isn't it? That'd be a terrible thing, wouldn't it be? Pastors raking the yard because you were watching that stupid movie. That'd be sad, wouldn't it be? When Jesus comes. Oh, I was willing. But did you get yourself ready for the Lord? Ready to serve. Free your schedule. Keep your body in good health. So when Jesus calls you to do something, you're ready to say, I was waiting. I tell you, Joshua, he was standing by. He says, Moses, or Joshua, uh, I'm talking about Caleb. Caleb, Yeah, that other guy. Caleb, he was ready. And when Joshua says, that's your mountain, he was gone. He was right there on the line. He says, you just give me the word. You just give me the word and I'm going to get that mountain. And that's exactly what we got to be. We got to stand by. And the pastor says, I got something for you to do. And you say, you just give me the word and I'll do it. But I don't know the Bible. I tell you, if you have all this free time and you get rid of your television, you can get to know the Bible. You have all this time. It's a pretty good book. 
like it. Ready to serve.